Ah, shit. This episode of the BRG Podcast has been brought to you by our patrons. Here at BRG, we'd like to thank those patrons who have subscribed and donated. It is because of generosity like yours that makes this show possible. On this episode of the podcast, Gaming Frontier joins us to talk about Microsoft's rebranding of Beam to Mixer. Kirok gives us the latest on game releases. And Nacho Panda joins us to talk about the Rocket League Championship Finals. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of the BRG Podcast! We welcome you with open arms and love, as usual, and possibly a whole lot of swearing and middle fingers, because that's just kind of who we are. But anyways, uh, we are a gaming podcast. We devote ourselves to talking about gaming news and topics and whatnots. We do tend to throw a little smattering of other things in there, like media tech and just really random crap, because why not? I'm your host, Warp Jester, and of course, my always beautiful, lovely, and very Canadian, possibly maple-flavored, Kirok. Hello, everyone. <laughs> and tonight, tonight I'm actually extra, extra, extra excited, because we have got two blokes from a wonderful, wonderful, all other gaming podcast, Gaming Frontier, to my bottom, my direct bottom, we've got Adolfo. <laughs> Hello there. How's it going, <laughs> and then right below Kirok, we've got Guillermo. Yes, that's right. <laughs> Hot damn! <laughs> yes. I'm multicultural gotcha. now. <laughs> All right, yeah, no, that's great, that's yeah. great. Great pronunciation, you got it too, Kirok. And yeah, yeah, thank you guys for inviting us. Yeah, we appreciate you coming yeah. on. Um, so just so you guys know, I actually was kind of looking around and trying to see whoever else was out there um this is one of the things i've been wanting to do for a while is I've, I've been wanting to pull other gaming podcasts together to hang with them to do collaborations with um i talked about this in the past but I'm, I, I came across you guys was having a real real treat uh, watching you guys i really enjoyed it i want to have you on and 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 lo and behold these guys are a bunch of suckers and actually said yes for someone, <laughs> I, I, I'm assuming they said yes and then started watching the podcast. They were just too polite to say no afterwards. So, you know, they <laughs> lost my know, game. No, but no. <laughs> well, we, we love doing this kind of stuff. So, of course, we would say yes. It's, it's a lot of fun for us. Yeah, you know, it's we, been we, we a, a very long time coming that we wanted to do something like this. Something like a collab with another, uh, you know, podcast out there. A cool podcast. And, and yeah, yeah, yeah. It's great. It's well, great. I, I if you find a cool it. podcast, let us know. Because we'd love to invite them, too. <laughs> <laughs> No, but seriously, um, uh, besides uh, doing the podcast, uh, what, what what have you guys been up to? Do you do anything else besides uh, talk about games? Do you, I, I'm assuming, play games? Oh, <laughs> so... Why don't you go first? Okay, so, I don't know if we mentioned it with you guys, but we are game developers as well. Holy crap! So, we, we work in an indie studio down here in Mexico, it, Actually, it's like one of the very few indie studios in the entire north of the country. So the name of the studio is called Lienzo. It's L-I-E-N-Z-S-E-C-R-O. Uh, so we work in there. I'm the marketing, PR, and publishing guy. And Guillermo is a programmer and a writer at the studio. And right now we are working on, on a game that's called Mulaka. It's Mulaka with a K. Mulaka. This is a, Sweet. This is an, an act, it's an action game based on an indigenous tribe from Mexico, from the north of Mexico. Okay. And this is, com this is, this is, coming, this is coming later uh, for Xbox One, PS4, and Steam. That's so that, awesome. So Kick that's ass. What we are, that's what we're doing Thanks, now. Thanks, man. And we also have a game that we released uh, earlier this year on January on Xbox One and PS4, and last year on PC. It's a 2D Metroidvania game called Hunter's Legacy. Holy so crap. It's a 2D... Uh, to this cipher game uh, it's st that stars a cat, a female cat, and this uh, this all takes place in an or on original fantasy universe that one of our artists came up with. So okay. yeah, you you can guess we are pretty busy with that kind of stuff. That's, yeah, and, yeah, you you think so? And lucky <laughs> for us, and I mean it, it's it's an honor for us. It, we're very happy about it. That is our day job. Like that is our job. That's what we do for a living. So. We are very honored of, of, of doing that. So you can guess that we really, really like games. I mean, we do make games for a living. <laughs> we, we talk about games on, on a podcast. 
and we play games on our free time. So yeah, we're basically we basically love video games. Nice. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, I, I actually want to hear more about that, but we'll 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 we'll, uh, we'll dive into a little deeper when we come to the wrap up here because I do want to hear. No, I mean, you kind of spilled spilled a lot right there to begin with, but nevertheless, Yemo, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, anything anything he's missed that's uh, that, that's uh, happened mean, that, in the last week or last month? That is why he is the the marketing guy. I mean, I, I just let him do all the talking and everything that's got to do with you know showing off the game, showing off the studio. It's his job. Yeah, that's uh, what he I'm does. Just a programmer and writer, and that's that's why I let him. Uh, <laughs> anything? I mean, there, not much to add. I mean, uh, we are gamers at heart. Uh, we've been doing it our whole lives, and now we actually do it for a, for a, you know, professionally, right? For for her. Yeah, living. be careful, so, man. Once once a hobby becomes a job, yeah. you know, yeah, it's yeah, not yeah, a hobby. I get you. Yeah. Hey, but you know what? That's good news because it means we're gonna get some really cool perspective from outside of our own. Because I've always been an armchair person of I could do this game better. I could do it. Like, you know what? <laughs> I actually get some pros in here. I can actually give, maybe school me a little bit. Uh, that said, guys, we do have a, a, a decent lineup of uh, news this week. I'll be honest with you, gaming-wise, a little bit light, not too yeah. terribly exciting. But we do want to talk tonight about uh, some new, oh, let's, let's call it uh, Microsoft mixing it up a little bit with their uh, Beam <laughs> streaming service. So we'll be doing a little more talk about that, and uh, I think the first we we'll probably do is just dive right into it. <laughs> Welcome back, guys. Okay, so we're going to be doing the speedy bits now, and I'm going to start it off. So, in Gadget Reports, Monster Hunter series is making it over to the Switch. That's right, Capcom's bringing over the Monster Hunter series over to Nintendo Switch, which is awesome. Um, I never really played any of the series, but a lot of people really like it. It isn't a brand new game, but it is a uh, the old Monster Generations from the 3DS ported over, and it's going to be known as Monster Hunter uh, two X's, or otherwise known as Monster Hunter Double Cross. I was really hoping it would have three X's. But... I thought you were going to say, I thought, I thought say Dos X's. <laughs> Dos X's. Dos X's lagger. So 8-Bit Zoo, they apparently make some cool retro controllers, which are not too cheap. They now have, they now implement some functionality for the Nintendo Switch. They can connect to the console, the Nintendo console, through the Bluetooth. That's awesome. Now, Nintendo... Come on! Where's the virtual fucking console? Uh, Come on. So, Engadget also reports that Xbox One Game Pass will start this June, uh, beginning June, June 1st. So that's, if you guys don't remember, we had this in the previous episode. 10 bucks a month gets you access to about 100 titles that you can download and play on your Xbox One. And those, I think those titles change uh, over monthly. Uh, get those hard drives ready, guys. Cool. All right. So if you guys are uh, fans of uh, motorcycle or mo motorcycle backflips, Player Unknowns got your back with. Uh, they added a new feature for their uh, latest game, uh, 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 Battleground, which adds not just uh, do they removed one of their vehicles, uh, side cars, or their mo motorcycles. They also added the uh, physics implemented uh, air maneuvering. Uh, feature which allows you to actually do some backflips and pretty cool, uh, uh, you know, streams. <laughs> uh, streamers already did That's it. That's pretty cool. I've watched people do it. It's funny because yes. why not make some backflips while you're getting shot at? <laughs> Absolutely, realism, right? Uh, they also added a pretty cool sniper rifle to the game. The uh, I'm gonna shred the name Bintovska Sniperskaya Spetsnilnaya, otherwise known as VSS. Pretty cool rifle I used it on World at War. Uh, yeah, I know, right? Uh, pretty much. So, yeah, for you aficionados out there of guns, there's that. And continuing on, uh, Steam VR makes its launcher more social with home. Uh, so the HTC Vive has, you know, an, an, in Steam VR, an area where you can kind of load up your games and things. So they have a beta testing that's going on for what's called Steam VR Home. Uh, you have to go into a certain section in Steam to enable uh, beta so that you can participate in it. But it's pretty cool. You're supposed to be able to uh, go around in a virtual environment, higher resolution that supports animations, sounds, and games, and you can set different things at your as your favorite default, which is pretty neat. Mm. Um, I'm going to check it out, but uh, I don't know if I like it. I, I personally like the customizing of my own area, right? There you go. 
if you bought a VR headset thinking that it would be the cool thing that will be getting a lot of games by this time, well, first of all, sorry. Second, <laughs> now the Oculus Rift supports room scale VR. That's the thing that the HTC Vive did support it, uh, initially when it launched. The Oculus Rift didn't. It was uh, it wasn't officially supported, but it, it kind of wore, but it was very, it was very, it was experimental in a way. So it, it had a better moniker on it. So it didn't, it was very glitchy. Now it, it has official support for it. So if you spend a lot of money on that, I guess, yay. Yeah. <laughs> Still. I'm a vibe guy. Oculus has not <laughs> done that well. Hey guys, we're going to uh, switch gears here. We're going to go from gaming news to media. I'm excited about this one. This is awesome. So Netflix Castlevania animated series is going to be released uh, very, very soon, July 7th. Um, so this is I, I'm I'm a big fan of, of like Japanese anime style stuff, and Netflix has done really well with the content that they've released. And I happen to be a kid of the Castlevania era, so this is like a win-win-win all around for me. So if you're really into this kind of stuff, you have a Netflix account, definitely check out the preview because the trailer has been released. And be ready for it July 7th. And check nice. out the trailer because it's very, very cool. I mean, the intro oh, God, the trailer, the, 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 the idea behind that, the concept is amazing. Yeah, I really like that. Epic! <clears throat> yes. Uh, Polygon reports that uh, Spider-Man Homecoming's uh, main actor, Tom Holland, will be playing or has been cast to play Nathan Drake in the Uncharted movie. That's specifically young Nathan Drake. In fact, the movie will center around uh, when Nathan Drake meets Sully or Sullivan in the uh, whole oh. movie. <laughs> no, I think it's pretty awesome. I really hope they stick close to the game because there was one, I think it was number two, where you kind of go through how they meet. Whoops, hit the mic. And uh, go on from there. It's pretty cool. Can I I'm... get can I get a counter? How many times have they like basically rebooted Spider Man now? Oh, oh I don't officially know. three. Yeah, it's it's crazy. Just for it's the main move. Are you sure? Because it feels like a it feels like we've gone through a lot of pain and no forward movement. Yeah. Uh, at least yeah. on the recent era, it's it's three times, which is a lot. Well, I mean, dude, ten it, years it's a it, lot. It, of it's, I want to see a story arc. I see a start. We reset. I see a start. We reset. No, I this agree. Is, I'm getting, I agree 100%. I'm getting blue balls from this movie. <laughs> you know what I hate about it? It's that it, they, they seem to be getting younger with each iteration. Like, the, this kid's now, like, actually a high school kid. This kid was, like, 17 when they hired him. Like, well, isn't that what Spider Man? No, he's in college. Never mind. Anyways, yeah, I'm yeah. Sorry, I digress. <laughs> yeah, no worries. So if you want to hear a new story from someone who doesn't know a shit about the new story, then you're in luck. <laughs> Silicon Valley returns to HBO for season five without the actor Ehrlich Bachman. Is it Ehrlich or er Ehrlich? Er I, I was going to call Ehrlich Bachman. Bachman, oh, whatever. Okay. German. So T.J. Miller is leaving the series after this season following a mutual agreement between the actor and the comedy's producers. The reason for the departure is cited as be related to the actor being consistently busy outside of Silicon Valley, most most notably with films like Office Christmas Party and the Emoji <laughs> movie. <laughs> and, yes, and yes, I did read all of that. Which, which, <laughs> Emoji movie, I mean... <sighs> Yeah, I'll Emotional rant some other day about that. It just sounds so retarded. <laughs> Although he's probably working on Deadpool 2, which is cool, I guess. That's I, I'm going to give him that one. <laughs> At the very least. Probably not the Emoji movie, indeed. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, moving to other news not related to tech or gaming. Uh, and a very good one at that. Pornhub. <laughs> Turned Yay. 10. Yes, Happy birthday to I'm, you. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm, I'm sure Pornhub, it's a, a very deep uh, partner almost for all of us. Uh, within the seven, seven months of its launch date on May 25th, uh, 2007, the, web, the website managed to reach 1 million daily visits, which is more people than some countries uh, actually have as inhabitants. A lot. Wow. Uh, by 2010, Pornhub have over uh, 100,000 videos uploaded to the site, which is 10 times. <laughs> Times the number of videos produced in YouTube spaces as of 2015. Wow. And, wow. Yeah, I know. Mm -hmm. And there's approximately 173 years worth of content already. So it, you, you're not going to be missing any, <laughs> anything from there today no to the day you die. There's something new 
at some point that you're going to be able time to see. Do, do we need to wrap this up so you can get back to it, Kirok? Because I don't want to hold uh, you up on that. No, no, I'm good. Years. I'm good. I took care of it before the show. <laughs> Speaking of content, speaking of content on (laughs) on Pornhub, (laughs) apparently the new big thing is fidget spinners. Yes. Why? I don't even know where to go with this. I don't even know where to go. Okay. So here's the thing is Pornhub constantly releases the the, the, the search data for people on, on the website. I go to Pornhub. I type in something I want to look up. Apparently, I don't know why. As of May, there were over 2.5 million searches for fidget spinners on Pornhub. Why? Why, though? I mean... This is, this is, this is just within, like, 10 days' time they had this. <laughs> um, fun fact, people who search for fidget spinners on Pornhub are usually between the ages of 18 and 24, most notably. And if you're a woman, you are 19% more likely to have searched for fidget spinners on Pornhub. Really? Extremely <laughs> odd. And not just that, the, these, the, this survey that took the, the, the whole data thing, they estimated that the search peak, that you know when people actually started searching for this in, in Pornhub, started on Mother's Day here in Mexico in 10. <laughs> 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 just like a very odd coincidence. Oh, man. May Happy 10. Mother's Day. Oh, my. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> spinners. I, I don't get Gotta it. Give like... me some of that. I don't get it. Like, why? I, I, mean, I I did get the Overwatch porn thing because, I mean, people like that kind of stuff. I get that, but this? Uh, you know, I agree why? with you only to the point when you see this, there's, a, there's a high number of searches for Bowser porn. That I don't get. Anyways, <laughs> that's going to wrap it up for our Speed Bites. Okay, guys. Welcome back to another one of your video game releases with me, Kirok. Let's get into it, guys. There are some really good ones here. All right, guys. So the first game is on May 30th. This game is Star Trek Bridge Crew. That's right. You get to play in the Star Trek universe. This game is a PS uh, is a VR game only available on Oculus Rift, HTC Vive, and PSVR. And in this game, you get to be part of the Bridge Crew on the USS... Aegis, Aegis, I believe it is, USS Aegis, and you get to play as captain or helmsman or even tactical specialist or even engineer. Uh, And the whole thing this game centers around is having everybody do their part. So if the captain says red alert, shields up, you got to put that up as the tactical guy. Otherwise, you could blow up the whole ship and kill everyone. So it's really awesome. The aspect of being inside that universe and participating with each other, I say, man, Make it so. And also on May 30th, we have Rising Storm 2 Vietnam. So this is a first-person shooter coming out for uh, PC on Steam and is based on the Vietnam War. The game uh, boasts that it has maps and weapons that are era-specific, so they you know, fit and come from that time frame in the war. Uh, And it also allows you to do things like customizations for uniforms and weapons as you level up in the game. I watched the video myself. I used to be one of those guys who really liked the old TV show Tour of Duty, if any of you guys remember that. And I could see myself playing it. It would probably be popular in the first person shooter realm. But the graphics looked a little bit dated to me. The characters were a little boxy and robotic. Eh, who knows? Also on May 30th, we have the game Perception. This game is coming out on PC, PS4, and Xbox One. It is a first person narrative horror adventure game. And this game is... It does something new, or at least something I haven't seen before. You play as a female heroine or character, but you're blind. So you play the entire game, and the entire game is a black screen, but you use your extra sensitive uh, sense of hearing to depict a picture of what you, what's in the room with you. When you look at it, it's pretty neat. It's kind of like sonar, and it does add to that eerie aspect of the game that the game is trying to achieve. So it does make it look kind of eerie and creepy. It's really cool. I'm going to check this one out. On May 30th, we have The Long Journey Home. Uh, this is coming out on PC with plans to bring it out onto the consoles later on. Uh, it is a space RPG adventure slash simulation. Basically, the concept is you are, you know, human race out in space, uh, and you're out on this short mission. Your jump drive fails, and all of a sudden, you're out on the other side of the galaxy, and now you gotta 
figure out what your resources are, count your casualties, and make your way home from the other side of the galaxy. The cool thing is, is in order to make this happen, in order to achieve this goal, you have to actually forge alliances with other uh, alien species. You have to cut deals with them. So that's where your RPG elements come into the game. It looks pretty neat. Um, I don't know if I'd ever get into it, but uh, some people who like those games where you kind of micromanage and do things like that, especially space-wise, yeah, this is looking cool. All right, guys, last one for the week, also May 30th, is The Walking Dead, A New Frontier, episode number five called From the Gallows. Uh, this is coming out for PC, PS4, and Xbox One. It is an adventure, action, survival, horror type game. It is probably one of the greatest choose-your-own-adventures, zombie-ridden world ever out there. Uh, check it out if you haven't. I don't really play the game. I watch it mostly. In fact, our uh, esports guy, uh, Nacho Panda, he has been streaming it on his Twitch channel. I urge you guys to check it out, and it's amazing. One of the things that struck me most about the video from this particular episode that's coming out is how far Clementine, the main star, has grown. She's now become a young adult and it's kind of disheartening knowing that she's grown up in a world where there's really no hope pretty crazy all right guys that brings us to the end of another week of game releases i hope you enjoyed it with me kirok and i will see you again next week bye for now all right, guys, we're going to dive into the media bites today. We've got one media bite that we really wanted to dive into a lot deeper. I gave a little hint at it. We're actually going to be talking about Microsoft's Mixer. Now, if you haven't heard of it before, it's because it is brand new in the sort. <laughs> this is actually uh, the, the Beam streaming software. This is a competitor to Twitch that Microsoft bought uh, some little time ago. And they're now rebranding it and bringing a whole bunch of new stuff to it. From the sounds of it, I'll be honest with you, it really feels like Microsoft is going all in uh, with with this new Mixer platform. Um, so we're going to kind of go down the line and, and talk about some of the new features it has and get some feedback and some thoughts on it because there is there is some really intriguing stuff here that uh, um, shows that Microsoft's not content to just make another Twitch clone, but they actually want to differentiate themselves and bring some new stuff to that. This kind of a, a, I call it a platform. I'm not sure that's really the right, right word for it, but the streaming uh, content. So to start us off here, I mean, you know, why the new name? And I watched the video for this, which I'll play for you in the background. Um, I'll be honest with you. Mostly it's marketing wank. <laughs> to be quite frank and yeah. honest. Um, yeah. But, but really it, 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 it's, it is kind of fitting because the, the new platform kind of takes that next step where Twitch is very, um, here, I'm going to broadcast what I'm doing and there'll be some 30, 45 second delay in me seeing what you're typing back at me. It really was kind of an, I'm playing my game, you get to watch me and there is interactivity in the form of chat that's kind of a secondary thing on the side. Mixer kind of hopes to change that. In a lot of ways. So first off, uh, the first one we're going to bring up here is going to be co-streaming. I find this very intriguing, and interesting. But co-streaming is it's going to allow up to four people simultaneously link their streams together. So you'll pull up one page, you'll have the yep. four cell kind of like Mario Party style four cell. Right. Um. Everybody's everybody's streaming now. What's what's interesting about this is it gives you the convenience that you have one unified stream. So if you have four people streaming the same game, all the chat is in one place. So the, if, if right. you're watching all four of us play, whether you're following through Adolfo or following through Kirok or following through me or following through Guillermo, it doesn't matter because you'll all be in the same chat room of sorts. So that's kind of neat. Um, that makes things a lot easier for the community aspect about it, which is nice. The other Can thing I mention is, something? Sorry. Go. About about that, <clears throat> so the morning that they made the announcement and everything, I went in and started watching someone that I street or follow, mm -hmm. and uh, the whole thing, and this is probably to be expected when they make a change like that, it was pretty buggy, actually. Uh, as soon as you go to the one channel that you're subscribed to, you see the multiple streams. If it's three of them, you see him in the center, or you see one in the center and two on the bottom. Mm -hmm. If it's four, you see all four evenly spaced, um, and it kept... Uh, it would mute the others automatically. Otherwise, you get uh, echoes sure. right from their talk. Okay. But then there were times where if you'd enlarge one of the one of them, because you can enlarge them at will, and then you'd minimize that one, all of a sudden all the audio on all four would come out, and you'd have to go and mute each one. And sometimes it wouldn't even mute each one of them. 
<laughs> they got little bugs to iron out. It, it, yeah. it, it, right. literally, it yeah. literally just came out the presses. So I, I will give them. I'll give them a little bit of a pass. I'm sure they'll find a way around that. But that's interesting. Of course, I didn't even think about that. If you have four different streamers up, you're gonna have to have selective audio. And I, I've known in some cases where people are, are playing and audio doesn't transfer very well in terms of how they set because there, there could be some some quirks to it. The other thing about the 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 the, the, the co-streaming is that you can co-stream with friends. Um, from different types of devices. So Kira could be on his Xbox. Um, I can be on yes. my phone. Guillermo can be on his PC. It doesn't matter. We can still all link together. We'll talk more about the phone aspect in a minute here. Um, that's kind of neat. And the, the other thing is you don't even have to be playing the same thing. <laughs> that's a, yeah, that's, that, that's a very, very cool one. Because, I mean, you can now have, like, just like you could have the like the party shot going on before right that you were mm -hmm. playing whatever you were playing and you can yeah. still communicate that now you can actually share that experience of not playing but being together with the rest of the people yeah, and yeah. that's a pretty neat feature that uh, uh, seems fairly innovative i mean I, I i haven't seen anything quite like it before which I, i'm giving a lot of credit to microsoft for, for that specifically no, no, they're, they're definitely yeah, they're it's, definitely it's... making waves, and like I said, it, it's something new and different, which I, I find fascinating. I, I could totally see somebody having like you know hecklers, you know, on a couple of their screens while he's playing a game. It, it, it's just inevitability would be like, yeah, I'm gonna get some friends together. They're gonna be hecklers on the you know doing some arm armchair quarterbacking, and <laughs> I'll be playing the game that can heckle me. <laughs> um, so that, that's gonna be interesting. Coming. Uh, uh, in the coming weeks, Xbox uh, One users will have the ability to invite friends to join for co-streams directly uh, from the guide. I think this is phenomenal for multiplayer games, for online multiplayer games. To have like collabs between channels oh, yeah. and, and able to just all four screens without well, too much of a hassle with equipment and setting up. Yeah, I, I, I can, I can agree with you on that. And, and because we do, for Ball Rocket Gaming, we do collab, collab type events like on our Minecraft server, we all get together. But it's always just one person streaming it all. So you're following him exactly. around. If anybody else happens to come into frame, so to speak, you know, you see what they're doing. Yeah. But that's about the end of it. It's kind of a hosted thing. So they'd be able to say, hey, Ball Rocket's going to host, you know, these four people or have it rolling or whatever. That's a, that's a brilliant idea. Exactly. Like, I don't know, like, the four of us, we can just play some, say, Halo 5, and and everyone who's watching who, who will be able to see all four screens of us at the same time. I think that's fantastic. Like, that makes up for a very cool community experience involving everyone. So that, that, that's mm -hmm. very cool. That's something very unique, and that's something that I think that represents, I think this can be uh, Mixer's biggest advantage, possibly, against Twitch right now. Actually, yeah. uh, Warp hit this on the head earlier and mentioned it, and that is that if I have viewers watching my uh, Mixer channel, and say Adolfo, you do, and Guillermo, you do, and Warp has his, and we do a four-way collab, the people that are in my stream chat in the unified chat and everybody sees, and they can simply just go up to your window, uh, you know, whoever, and click and hit follow, and it's like a good way to cross-pollinate and like it's That's it's awesome. collaboration yes. shares, yes. yeah. It's amazing. That's another good point. Well, so it, it, again, I, I think this is a really cool feature because it it, it does give uh, uh, streaming people a new tool to help expand their channels to do more collaboration. Which I think collaboration is a big deal because I've I've I have found so many cool people because of hey, this person is, is offline, but they're sharing this other person's channel. Yeah. And I've come across I, I I came across a guy today that plays gaming and 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 fun music on an accordion <laughs> and i would never find it had that uh, band for it for was cool else. yeah it was, it's great interesting anyways so that that's that's the big that's the big part of this i think for for mixer now that said <laughs> that's a feature and if microsoft was going to rebrand and put a feature in there i'd kind of go okay you know again we 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 we've all, we all agree here i think that it's a great feature but it's just one feature and if it was just that i'd call it done but some other things are thrown into the mix um the other thing is is mixer create and what this is is on bay release it's going to be a mobile streaming uh um function or uh, application connection to your streaming account so if you're not in front of your computer or your xbox playing games you can pull out your mobile 
and do basically selfie vlogging and stay connected to your streamers. So you can pop on out of nowhere. You know, you're waiting at DMV and, and do a little vlog and connect with yep. your viewers and have fun with them. <laughs> um, it is going to be available on iOS and Android. Um, i trying to think. Hold on here. So it, it, it is, it's going to be uh, available publicly on Android uh, almost immediately soon it comes out and through Apple's uh, test flight service by invitation only. So if you want to do things mobile, you're pretty much set for doing things. If you like doing vlogging type stuff, mm. you want to um, be able to, to jabber at people that way, that's great. They will be incorporating gameplay streaming as well down the line. They haven't given a firm date on okay. it. So if you want to stream, that's you cool. playing mobile games or okay. playing Pokemon Go or whatever. YouTube actually does this. I, I can do that on my Android phone already to some extent. But they do it. They will have that coming down the pipe. And no, Kirok, there's no chance of it coming on the Switch. Oh. <laughs> 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 um, are, do, do you guys have any? Uh, are, are you into vlogging? On your phone? Uh, that's that's not necessarily into the vlogging part, but actually, I mean, thinking here about the platform itself. I, I myself, I don't really do much of uh, the streaming per se of things, right? But thinking on the, you know, thinking on it uh, as a platform where you could potentially join someone else's stream, right? As, as, as with my account, I'm joining a Kirk's, uh, uh, playing something, and I join that that session or that stream, mm -hmm. and then people can see me, and then, you know, because streaming, it's in on itself a very different experience than playing on your own per se, because you have to interact, you have to be aware oh, yeah. of, you know, your audience and all that. Uh, I, I, I see this as a great platform for someone like me that's not really used to the streaming or someone that's not, that never has before thought, you know, I haven't thought about streaming in on itself before. It could be a great way or a great getaway or a great getaway, sorry, for, uh, you know, getting in a platform like this and start to do it as you know as, as something regular right yeah and 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 i i see that great because it's 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 so much easier to be there first with someone you know hand in hand and and someone showing you the ropes in a way uh so that you can then just branch out and do your own thing and, and now you have an audience that follows you and now you have something that you couldn't do before because you didn't really do it you know you didn't build that audience or you were not used right. to doing it or something like that so i, I think and... that's a very neat thing yeah yeah go ahead go ahead and what's the point, as we said before, nobody has to be playing the same thing to do co-streaming. So yes. you can jump on your phone and heckle anybody at any time. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I would assume you could even vlog while someone else is playing a game, right? I'm, like, yep. I'm here on DMV or something, and you're playing Minecraft or whatever. And, and, and like, it doesn't have to be a game. It's just a, a shared moment shared experience, that we yeah. can have, right? Yes, yeah, that's well, pretty neat. And the other thing we reported on last week, too, was that uh, of people who play video games... Uh, mobile was like one percent less than PC. I think PC was like twenty eight percent, and mobile was twenty seven percent or something like that. Um, so right. there's as much mobile gaming out there as anything else. And I'll be honest with you, if I saw somebody playing hyper uh, uh was a hyper heroes mobile game, I'd probably sit there and watch it for a little bit because I'm I'm loving that game. So you know, <laughs> hey, there you go. Um. <laughs> The other thing I want I want I want to fleece over, and I'm sure Kirok will have something to say about this because he actually is an Xbox user. I'm not, but they have the Mixer page is going to be on the Xbox dashboard. Yeah. Hmm. I don't so even know what that means, Kirok. Is, is this important? Do I care? You, it's going to be baked <laughs> into the OS for Xbox One, so you can actually do the same thing you can as if you go to Mixer.com and and have a channel there. So. I haven't yet checked, to be totally honest, if it's already up or not, or if it's something that's coming. But I will be able to play a game and stream it right from my but Xbox you, directly. You mean like on a like a separate tab? It's like the home tab, the social tab, yes. and then the mixer? I, I don't know if it's going to be a separate tab, but they'll basically have access to your Beam account. Mm. So it, I mean, when they first released these new generation consoles, which aren't that new anymore, <laughs> one of the big things was share button on oh, their controllers, right. and you could share right to Twitch yeah. directly. Right, um, right. So I think what's happening with uh, Xbox or Microsoft through Xbox, because Microsoft owns Beam formerly Beam, now Mixer, um, 
uh, there it's gonna be put right into the xbox one experience so you can share your gaming experience god right online with everyone Marketing wank the xbox <laughs> one experience if you're you know if, i gotta experience. say it's kind of cool because you don't have to worry about capture cars or having a computer uh, i, I, I get that, that don't get me true. wrong don't get me wrong i get that and that's right having 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 this ability natively baked into consoles is great that's great it's great yeah, yeah. And I, if, other, if I had to pick, I still go PC, but that's me. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I think that this you... is key for the success and the positioning of a mixer brand, a mixer app. Just having it, uh, it uh, portrayed or oh man, what's the word? Like having it displayed on the Xbox One dashboard. I think this is very important to get it into into the eyes of Xbox One gamers because let's face it, most people who play, who most 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 people who do play on Xbox One. Still do not know about this. I mean, mm-hmm. only the most hardcore guys like us saw the news and saw this on our YouTube feed. Uh, so only people like us do know about it. But there's like a shit ton of people on Xbox One right now who do not know about this and will yep. be consumers of it. I mean, maybe they will not be streaming, but they will definitely be watching content. Yeah. There's a lot of people who are going to be watching FIFA matches or whatever, right? Or Gears of War matches and fooling around on on, on oh, yeah. so it's like having it, another channel right there on your menu exactly it's... like i think this is it's very important for, my, for microsoft to put this in front of you in front of your eyes and in front of everyone on xbox one and if, if they're definitely doing this i think they do have a fighting chance against twitch on this and don't forget if you ever look at your xbox you see this ugly mug over here make sure you click on it <laughs> 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 um, the, the other thing that they, they didn't note is that uh, Mixer is going to be a big part of the E3 event. They're going to be streaming a bunch of E3 uh, stuff yeah. going on on Mixer, so you'll be able to actually watch live events, panels, and so on. They'll also be doing the uh, E3 briefing in 4K. So in for 4K? Systems, yeah, that's four, pretty cool. In 4K! 4K! More Mercury Wank! Yay! <laughs> um, I mean, that, that's cool, because... PCs have high resolution monitors in most cases, and now Xbox uh, is going to have sort of for. I'm never really sure if it's actually real 4K or if there there's, there's so many news reports going back and forth. But anyways, I digress. <laughs> um, so okay, a couple of new features, which is great. They're really trying to bring streaming uh, into the eyes of new people by making it easy with the uh, Xbox One dashboard. They're adding more functionality to it with the with the mobile game capacity coming soon the vlogging ability there um the collaborative abilities a lot of features and functions but then microsoft is is going what i think is one step even further into this which is they're also uh bringing up or, or branding what they're calling the mixer new york studio so the, uh, microsoft really don't know they're based out of redmond washington but they have a huge store and a presence in new york because you know everybody does um, but they're actually going to have a Mixer Studio on site. So this is located in their flagship uh, store in, in New York. And the Mixer Studio is going to be basically is a digital production studio, full-on digital production studio on the fifth floor. It's going to be outfitted with professional game, professional gaming stations so people can come in and actually do events there. Control room supports 2D and 3D graphic effects, digital audio systems, uh, arena, concerts, quality. I mean, it, it, it's... It is a full-on studio for having. Uh, they can even have uh, live uh, live audiences. Everything. So it's going to be a big deal. And they're going to produce content and host events, uh, broadcast esports events, streaming events, etc. <clears throat> from this studio through Mixer. You know what's so, great about that? It's that it it shows. It goes to show that they are not. It's not just like a gimmick thing of oh yeah, it's so great and has interactivity and all that and all the features that we already touched on uh, upon already uh, before. Yeah. And it means that they are actually going like full house and and, and all in with this. And yep. It's like there's some huge investment being done with with uh, Mixer and and all that it encompasses. And I mean that's great. That's good. It, it's it's Microsoft trying to be again. Uh, the yeah. alpha dog, right? It's trying to yeah. go back to being, uh, you know, competitive and aggressive, not just defensive with uh, whoever the competition is. And and I think that's cool because it's a Microsoft that we haven't really seen in a long while, right? And I that's... absolutely agree with you. Absolutely yeah. agree with you. And this is this has made me very excited. Is ever ever since the the the, the idiot uh, Balmer stepped down, Microsoft <laughs> has done nothing but gotten better. 
Yes. And it, it's, it's, it's all been voted. But yeah, I agree with you. And this, again, this shows that they're putting their money where their mouth is. They're not just creating a new, a, a new element to their platform. They, they, they didn't buy a platform let languish. They're content to say, you know what? <laughs> we have the technology to make this a great thing, to move ahead of the competition, not just copy them. And to be quite frank, it's Microsoft. We have the we have the deep pockets to go head to head with yeah. Amazon. <laughs> yeah, so sure. if anybody can do it, it's gonna be them. Um, yeah. Some cute full of fun things is uh, they they kicked off. It's over now, but they kicked off the event. Uh, they had live broadcast around Washington. Uh, news about next year. They had guest hosts on, including the Mike uh, the Minecraft uh, team, since they own Minecraft as well. Yeah. Don't think, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, then they kicked it over to the New York studio. Did some a bunch of stuff there. Live games. They brought it back for talking with the founder of Mixer. And talk about some of the features coming up. And then they have what's really cool. It's called Mixer Works, which is a live interactive element to it. And basically, it's kind of like you have Twitch plays where people can try to control Pokemon. In oh, this yeah, case, okay. it was a live, <laughs> honest to God, fireworks show going off. Yeah. And people could use their sparks as a point system you get in Beam. Yep. Sorry, Mixer. Um, you could use your sparks to kind of dictate which fireworks went off and when. Oh, that's <laughs> awesome. So, oh, yeah. and, it, it, and speaking it, it, of sparks, just so you know, mm -hmm. um, I woke up one day and I had like 60,000 sparks when all I had were 6,000. So it, again, it had to do with the level. If your level's at a certain range, if you've been, you know, watching and so on, they you bumped you up. I hear I've been ignoring Beam too much. I should be up there. <laughs> I, I, I like Beam there. In I feel so left out now. Um, <laughs> anyways, guys. Um, I, I, I need to wrap this up, but just 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 so we cover all news fairly, just so you know, Twitch is not sitting on their hands or you know the thumbs up their asses or anything like that. Twitch just announced that there's a um, some new inter interactive features coming to Twitch, which is going to have interactive features, so, some of which are tailored to specific games. To give you an example, uh, for games such as Overwatch, Hearthstone, League of Legends, they will get interactive overlays featuring some. Uh, unique and personalized interactive tools based on the game. It could be things like heat maps for all the people watching to, to click on whether they oh. want the player to play a uh, card, what card to pick up, or live stats on the screen the players can interact with so they can see what's going on. So it's going to be more connecting that, that chat with the live stream more and more. Um, so be mindful of that. Uh, features currently being showcased on a handful of streamers right now, but they will eventually become live for everybody. So if you're a, a Twitch person, Twitch is not standing still. They're not gonna, mm -hmm. they're not gonna sit down and take this one. Um, beta is due out start next week, so just you know, be aware of that. Um, one last thing, guys, and we we do really need to wrap this up, but I want to do a quick round here, and a, a really good question that Garen actually put forth is: Will people actually use an alternative to Twitch, Kirok? I, I switched to Beam a while ago. <laughs> there you go. Adolfo? They have, a, they have a fighting chance, definitely. Fair enough. Guillermo? If someone can pull it off, it's definitely Microsoft. Yeah. Deep pockets can go a long way, but you do need they brilliant do. minds, and you do need yes. some, some good tech, and it sounds like True. this is going to be a really interesting thing to watch. Absolutely. Definitely. Anyways, guys, that's going to wrap it up for our meaty bites if you guys have thoughts input if you think we're wrong somewhere or miss something please do let us know you can leave a comment note below what's up everybody it's your boy nacho panda and tonight we are going to be talking about esports and esports related stories yes that is right you guys we got some awesome stories to talk about tonight we got some league of legends we got some rocket league man we are going to be covering the spectrum of esports um, so yeah, let's get right into it and let's, uh, start talking about that juicy details. All right, you guys, for our first story, we're going to actually jump back real quick and we're going to talk about League of Legends and the mid-season invitational. For those who aren't really sure, check back our, on our last couple uh, episodes where we were talking about this. And, uh, basically what this is, is it's a tournament in between the spring split and the summer split where they get the world's best teams in League of Legends to play and duke it out and basically get really brutal with each other and see who's the best so we had the last couple of weeks they've been doing knockout rounds and all that kind of stuff now we're getting to the real fun stuff we had the semifinals which was sk telecom t1 versus flash wolves now this team <laughs> this matchup is freaking insane because these two teams are really good skt hands down 
probably the best team to play League of Legends of all time. So naturally, they're going to bring their A game. And you got Flash Wolves, who have proven that they are playoff ready and that they are willing to step up and uh, really do what they have to do to win. But uh, it wasn't enough this time as SKT 3-0 swept them in a best of five series, which, you know, most people weren't <laughs> really surprised about. But we go to the next matchup, which was Team WE versus G2 Esports. Now, G2 Esports, if you've been paying attention, have a lot to prove. They have a lot to lose. So for them to make it this far is incredibly awesome. They have the chance to really show everyone that they are, that last season in, in Worlds was not a fluke. They can do it again. And they have proven that they can do it because they beat Team WE 3-1 in a best of five. So that made it to the finals. That made it to SKT versus G2 Esports. And that series was crazy. I mean, these two teams are just, oh my god. When you think of a matchup, you would not believe that SKT and G2 bring their A game. I mean, I, you you would think SKT, but G2, you're like, well, they've done okay, but they just really haven't hit that next tier of, you know, skill. But, I mean, they made it to the finals against SKT. That's proving something. That's letting the people know that they are not here to mess around. They are willing to do what they have what they have to do but turns out SKT <laughs> dominated again for their second MSI championship in two years or their second MSI championship they won last year and then they won this year went in a 3-1 for best of five so congrats to SKT congrats to all the teams that made it that far you know I can't wait to see what happens in worlds because this is just a sample size of the chaos that will ensue in worlds so Spring or uh, sorry, summer split will be starting up fairly soon. I believe it starts next weekend, the weekend, the first weekend of June. So we will definitely be watching that very closely to see how G two does and to see how the North American can the North American teams can stack up in this world of League of Legends and all of its chaos. So we'll uh, definitely be uh, updating you guys on that very shortly as more information more information comes out. So all right you guys, that's going to bring us to our next story and it is in the world of Rocket League. We have the World Championships coming up June 2nd through the 4th. They will actually be fighting to prove who is the best in the world. Now, this brings the top 4 teams in both Europe North America, and then it brings the top two teams from the Oceania um, series, which is starting to finally make its way into the limelight with North America and Europe because they have kind of held that. So we will see these teams face off June 2nd through the 4th. I am so excited because I think Rocket League is really kind of making its way in the world of esports. I mean, if you've never watched it, I suggest even taking a small time to watch a you know small clip of competitive Rocket League, I think it's a really big game that should be getting more respect because it is tough to play this game. But we will talk about that another day. We're going to go over real quick the teams that will be competing for all the glory in the World Championships. And we'll start with Europe. We're going to go with the number one seed, Mocket Esports EU. Now, I heard a little bit about this team because I heard that they went in mediocre into cha into the tur into the um, EU championships, and then they just wiped. They were destroying people, so I am excited to watch Mock at Esports play. And then we got the number two seed, Flipside Tactics. I've heard a little bit about them as well, not as much as I'd like to, but I am excited to see how these teams do. And <laughs> in, in the number three seed, we have the Leftovers. Don't know anything about this team. Love the name, uh, so we will definitely be keeping a close eye on them as well. And then in the number four seed for Europe, we have Northern Gaming. And again, another team I don't really know a whole lot about because East, Rocket League Esports is really starting to get to, um, it's starting to kind of fill in and, um, you know, more is starting to come out of the woodworks about uh, Rocket League Esports. And they're starting to become more popular. So we will definitely be hearing more about these teams in the World Championships. But now we're going to go over to North America, my home, my stomping grounds, people. And we're going to cover the top four seeds in the North American uh, division. And we got number one, NRG Esports. This team, I've seen them play a little bit, and holy crap, these guys are good. I cannot wait to see NRG just play 
the freaking field. I mean, they're going to do incredible. And um for those who don't under for those who don't know, the format is 3 versus 3. So you'll have a team of people that you will be playing with on the field. The field. <laughs> and um I can't wait to see them play. I am so excited to watch NRG. And in the number 2 seed, we have Rogue. Not Team Rogue, not Rogue Esports, Rogue. <laughs> they are going to be playing in the number two seed going into Worlds, and I think that's awesome. Good luck to them. We got in the number three seed, we got Selfless Gaming. Dope-ass logo. They, they. I mean, I don't know a whole lot about them either, but I am excited to learn all about these teams. And then in the number four seed for uh, North America, we have Denial Esports. So, again, a team I can't wait to see play. I'm just I'm over I'm overjoyed with all the teams that are making it to Worlds. And then we got we cannot forget about the Oceana series uh, the Oceana division because they are a smaller division but they have heart, damn it. They are <laughs> ready to fight and ready to prove to North America and Europe that they can hang too. So we got the number 1 seed in Oceana. We have Alpha Sydney. I can't wait to see that, man. That's awesome. And then we have, in the number two seed for Oceana, we have Just a Minute Gaming. Jam, for short. So, <laughs> we're going to see them jam on the field. But, um, these are the ten teams competing for your glory, for all Rocket League glory, and to entertain you. So, we will definitely be key, uh, keeping a close eye on that, and we will be updating as that happens. So, make sure to uh, tune in and check it out, and uh, we'll talk about it as it goes. So... There you go, you guys. There are the teams fighting, and uh, good luck to all of you competing in the World Championships. All right, you guys. Our next story is going to kind of take a turn for a bittersweet feel. Uh, we have Wild Turtle, the the starting eighty carry from Team Solo Mid, TSM for short, uh, in League of Legends. Uh, he is leaving the team to play for FlyQuest. Now, this is kind of interesting because he did actually surprisingly well with TSM in the spring split but um coming into the summer split they were going to do a shared role for that AD carry position with another player coming in double lift now um while turtle has shown he's expressed feelings that he wants a starting position like he doesn't want to share the role and unfortunately that wasn't going to work with what TSM wanted to do so they both, you know, parted ways, mutual uh, mutual respect for each other, but it uh, looks like Wild Turtle will be joining FlyQuest for the summer split starting next weekend, the first weekend of June. So it'll be interesting to see because he will actually be joining a team where he's played with some of the other players um, on FlyQuest. So it'll be cool that that synergy will still exist with his new team that, um, I don't know, man, I... I I'm kind of bummed out because I really liked Wild Turtle with TSM. He did really well, and I think because they had past experience with each other, like Wild Turtle used to play for TSM years ago, to see him leave again, it's kind of, it's a bittersweet because Double Lift coming in, the guy who uh, was the starting AD carry last year for TSM, he was really freaking good at mo uh, most of the time, so... You know, it's kind of out with the old, in with the old. <laughs> so we'll see how they do. Um, I wish all the best of luck to Wild Turtle. I uh, can't wait to see you play. And um, I guess we'll just have to wait for when TSM and FlyQuest play. And uh, <laughs> it'll be an interesting matchup. But um, Wild Turtle, we'll see you on the rift, You guys, man. that's going to wrap it up for this week on our esports coverage. Like always, make sure to follow me on social media right up here and make sure to comment below if you guys want to see any specific games and stories esports anything esports related comment below so that we know thank you guys so much i've been nacho panda and you just watched the esports segment thanks peace all right guys we're gonna go ahead and wrap this one up for this evening um i had a lot of fun with this and i want to say a very big and special thank you to the guys in front of me that uh that nah. uh, <laughs> thank you, Ed, thank Ed, you. the sprung <laughs> on us that they happen to be game people, not just gamers. <laughs> Who would have thought? I know. <laughs> Tell me a little about that. We got a little chance to talk about it a little bit here, and I want—I don't want to I don't wanna waste your time repeating yourself. But uh, anything interesting coming up in your realm when it comes to the gaming development and world that you're allowed to talk about? 
<laughs> Abs absolutely, thanks, Jester. So, uh, as I mentioned in the in the intro of the show, we're making a game called Mulaka. This is the and the game will actually be demoing at E3. Nice. So Sweet. So we will. So we will yes. be going to E3 in what's it two weeks from now? And That's right. We we will be there the whole E3 week. Uh, we'll be arriving there on Sunday. So if you, if any of you watching, listening to the show, it's gonna uh, if, if you're gonna be at the show at, at the E3 Expo, please, please hit us on Twitter. We would love to hang out with you guys, both you and I. We will be with uh, with two other members of our team. We'll be uh, just on the show floor and on meetings and on parties, especially all this fun stuff that's <laughs> happening right there at E3. So. That's a big thing. Like that, I mean, both your and I, we have a tradition, like sort of this tradition of every year getting together and just uh, watching it, read, watching the conferences, and this it's, it's it's a very fun thing for us. We love doing that. It's it's it's, it's for me personally. I think it's my favorite week of the year. <laughs> Go I love, figure. I, I don't love, blame you. <laughs> I love it so much. And now it's like are, Christmas. Exactly, <laughs> it is. And, now it's, this, is a, this is the first time that, that uh, we will actually be at E3, oh, and nice. uh, not just as as fans, but as industry professionals, right? So, it's on one side is very. No, wait, 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 is that professionals side... or professionals? <laughs> no, it's professionals. No quotes. Man. No, it's, it's, no, air no quotes. quotes. <laughs> it's professionals. So, it's it's exciting, but at the same time, it's it's uh, sort of like challenge in the in the in the sense of. Wow, like we gotta live up to something right now, right? So that that's a very cool thing for us. Um, very cool. That, now, for 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 Twitter, just real quick, it you both have Twitter accounts, and we'll have those in the correct. show notes for people. So fear not, don't worry about pausing the video and try to write it down. We will, we got you covered. <laughs> All right. Awesome. Absolutely, you can find the links below or somewhere around here, so you can follow us on Twitter. I'm way too um, lazy to put those up. <laughs> <laughs> No. I'm gonna be honest with you right now. Cards, <laughs> overlays, all that. No, it's not gonna happen. <laughs> uh, so that's the E3 thing. Also, I mean, basically the coming weeks and months is, is, are gonna be spent around uh, getting Mulaka finished, getting Mulaka done. We're right now on the last few stages of production. Nice. So we will be just getting getting that covered, working on that. <laughs> Uh, in the next couple of days and weeks, we have something very huge, something a big announcement coming for the game. So uh, we, I can talk about it now, but there's, <laughs> there's a, it's a big announcement. So if you wanna get the news delivered to you, feel uh, just make sure to subscribe on lienzo.mx. That's our website. It's l i e n z o .mx. So you can subscribe there. No spam, of course. You get just a very cool news news from us every couple of weeks, Sweet. and you will receive this new story when when it's announced. I am hoping it it will be uh, delivered in the next couple of days. Uh, I can I can say that it will be sent out before E3. That's the thing. So, and I, I will also us? bet you guys, Dollar Dollar, there's a, probably a good chance you're probably gonna say something on your uh, Gaming Frontier channel when something comes out. Absolutely, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Uh, but but the, the if if you want to if you want to get the news straight to you the moment it is announced that's the way to go on uh, subscribing to our our community newsletter or following us on social media on our website lienzo.mx you can find the links to all of our social media channels Facebook Twitter Instagram Tumblr YouTube all the jazz so kick ass <laughs> you can almost see the switch turning for the marketing guy like okay it's time it's time to promote our shit it's yeah go to social media go to our newsletter hey you know what it is it, 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 for much like give people a hard time about marketing wank because yeah, I, I did a little counter kid rock in the corner this is ting i'm gonna tell you can say this it's it's a tough thing to do, and it's a lot of work to do it. So I, I give yeah. mad props to anybody who's got the routine down, and knows how to pull it off. It, it is it is truly a job. I'm yeah, trying my... not I'm trying not to go full PR mode. <laughs> <laughs> yes. 
and, and pitch and, 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 and give you that quick elevator pitch of the game and all this stuff. I'm trying to be more casual about it, but it's super tough. Hey, because... I'm looking. I'm excited about it. I'm going to go check it out because uh, those kind of games are very interesting to me. I love watching them. And the, the style of it and the look of it, it looks like... Um, it looks, it looks like the kind of style that Kurt J. Back normally plays. This is the kind of stuff I oh, end up yeah. always picking up all the time. So, yeah, yeah. I, wouldn't, I wouldn't be shocked if it ended up in his hands, to be honest with you. Oh, we would love that. We would yeah, love I'm we would love that. Well, I would love that, too. <laughs> so I can watch it then. I'm so horrible. I, I won't play the damn things because I just I never have the time. But being able to live vicariously through somebody else and watch them go through these kind of games is always a blast. Um, again, guys, you both have Twitter accounts. We'll make sure you have those, show, those links in the show notes. We'll also make sure we have a link to your guys' website so people can head out there, see the preview videos, get signed up so they can get a heads up on it. And, of course, um, uh, you know when E3 comes up, there's going to be a lot of chatter about it. So make sure you guys stay tuned to what's going to be happening. And, again, they have Twitter accounts. They have the main website. They'll tell you what's going on. And I highly recommend that you guys go check out Gaming Frontier because these two guys uh, have a lot of fun doing a lot of same things that we do in terms of talking about stuff, giving us insight, and they're more professional than we are, so you actually get some real honest to God insight. Nah, <laughs> not at all. It might be actually nah. worth a damn. Just, uh, we but seriously, guys. We mics and that's all. I hate it. Mics make the man, I believe is the term. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, Kirok, my friend. Yes, sir. Anything exciting coming up? <clears throat> I am, So I started streaming again. I, 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 I saw the stream. Mixer. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah I finally got everything set up did a one broadcast a couple days back next one i'm going to be doing is monday late so yeah when this airs but late much much later um and you're neglecting your youtube account i am but i'm gonna be <laughs> i'm gonna start putting stuff on don't worry i just actually got a new set of box lights or lighting uh, for the area where I do, I'm going to be doing the VR uh, mm -hmm, cool. in front of the green screen, and so I gotta take a look at my notes, figure out what games I have permission to do, and start posting some games. Always some VR the games. fun job. Gotta get permission. Mm -hmm. Gotta get permission. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. I hear there's a really cool studio that does some games that you might oh, be yeah? using playthroughs of. I could probably connect you with them. What's the name of the? I got. I got connections. Is? Okay, all right. Some, let me know. I, after we're done here, just let me know. Like you can message me. I, I'll do that. I'll do that. <laughs> um, anything else exciting come up with you personally or with Project Singularity? Um, I went to uh, well, okay, this was something that happened already, but I went to a birthday party and it was at a place called Tilt. <gasps> Right, I heard about that. And I posted a whole bunch of pictures on uh, social media. They basically had the old style arcade games. So they had all kinds of games like Tron, Punch Out with the two screens. Wow. They had 1942 Pac Man, a bunch of oh, pinball cool, machines, and it was it was like uh, basically it's a bar. You pay you, you, a cover charge of five bucks, and then you, the games are free to play. You just play whatever game you want. There's no quarters oh, needed great. or anything. That's very cool. That's but phenomenal. they make their money on the food and the and the booze right. they sell, right? Huh. But it's wow. really it was really a lot of fun. It's like really gambling fun. without the actual gambling. <laughs> <laughs> it's got back when you Pretty pay for cool. the drinks you're supposed to get oh. drinks for free yeah. sounds, like, sounds like my kind of place definitely <laughs> cool beans man yeah this is a lot of fun it reminds me because we had coming up this summer we i always do the uh, california extreme uh con and oh yeah, that's yeah i remember big convention we, we did a video of it last year for you guys on uh on our, our podcast um, but it, it, it's a big convention where people bring in all of their beloved uh, arcades, pinball machines, modern and old, put it on free play. It's like $30 or $40 to get in, and you just go ham boat on it. And I'm, we are going to be going back, by the way, this year uh, cool. for that and doing some more videos, so be aware of that. People, you can see these wonderful pictures I'm looking at right now of Tilt and Kirox shenanigans on his Twitter account. So now you've got three accounts you need to go check out on Twitter. Make sure you stay connected that way. I myself, as uh, usual, you guys... Can check out mine later. Go to Gamey Frontier. <laughs> nah. I can wait. I can wait. Um, head on head on over to my uh, gaming account if you want to see World of Warships. I'll have some more other alternative content coming out down the line here pretty shortly. Um, but, of course, you know, ships is my thing. So enjoy seeing that. And, of course, I've got more content coming out on my Moto Vlogs. So if you like seeing shitty Moto Vlogs or me being a dumbass and writing to work in the rain 
this is the place <laughs> for you. Check it out. <laughs> and of course, guys, I would be remiss if I did not mention this wonderful, wonderful group called Bar Rocket Gaming. We are a community of gamers. We do everything from, oh, you know, gaming. Um, no, really, <laughs> we, we are a new media uh, community, which means it isn't just about gaming. Gaming happens to be the, the focus we started out with, the press started with, but we like to support and help everybody and work as a community to create content, whether it's streaming, whether it's YouTube content, whether it's creating art. Uh, again, everything you see in this podcast, from the artwork to the logos, the music, is all done by BRGers. This is a 100% full-on BRG content created thing. So, Please go on over to BallRockGaming.com and check us out. And, of course, if you're already here at this wonderful video for Ball Rocket Gaming, I definitely highly suggest that you go ahead and subscribe if you want to keep up on stuff like this. We do try to keep things fun, light, and um, airy. <laughs> I guess this is the word I was going to use. I don't know why. Um, but also, if you, if you enjoyed this, please do leave a like and certainly do leave a comment. We always love getting feedback from people, getting your two bits on topics. Uh, we do have a Twitch account we do have plans to try to use streaming more in the future. Nothing on the books just yet. Just, you know, it is out there in case you want to keep a heads on it. We do often host other people who are on Twitch. So if you head over to Bottle Rockets, uh, twitch.tv slash Bottle Rocket Gaming, and we're not on, chances are I'll probably have somebody else on that we are hosting. And of course, last but not least, promotion. It's a thing, it has to happen. Please, guys, if you could give us a shout out along any sort of social network you happen to be part of, whether it be Facebook or Twitter or whatever, we certainly do appreciate it and we certainly welcome it. We love that kind of help and it is a huge help. Um, but if you want to take the armchair approach to things, you want to sit back, relax, and just know that you're helping out, you are welcome to head over to our Patreon account over at patreon.com slash bottle rocket gaming. And you can go ahead and uh, pitch anything from a buck, which we'll give you a hearty thank you for. All the way up to 50 bucks, you get yourself a t shirt with the Bar Rocket custom Bar Rocket logo, which is super awesome. Um, it's not really the logo we have here on our screen. It's it's a, It looks like a kid with, did it with a crayon, to be honest with you. <laughs> it's, it's fantastic, and I love it, and I need to get one. Anyways, guys, thank you guys so much. And Gaming Frontier guys, thank you so much for joining us. This was thank absolutely guys. fucking Not awesome. Thank you for the invitation. A lot of fun. We really enjoyed ourselves. And, and please, you guys at the audience, subscribe, really. They, these guys are great. They do great <laughs> content quality-wise, and it's it's awesome. So follow them up, social media. Follow us up, too, if you if you liked us for whatever reason. And so awesome. you can keep in tune with the new game coming out. <laughs> absolutely, yeah. And yeah, absolutely. follow us on Malaga and. But subscribe to these guys. They're amazing. They're great top-notch people, and, and we just love you guys. Thank you for the invitation. And we they just don't know us yet. That's why he's saying this. They'll <laughs> learn later. <laughs> Anyways, guys, have a wonderful night. Good night. Goodbye, everyone. Keep playing, guys.